Bantry House in County Cork, South West Ireland, has been in the Shellswell White family for over 300 years. The current residents, Edgerton and Brigitta, have worked for the last 30 years to keep the house standing and have built up the business with house and garden tours, a tea room and bed and breakfast. Previous generations have struggled with it and it's a challenge. We felt that it was a challenge worth rising to. When I got married, it never occurred to me that it should be sold. So once you get into that mindset, somehow mm. that it has to be, it has to be preserved, whatever. But in his late 70s and unwell, Edgerton felt that he and Brigitte could no longer carry on being the sole caretakers. So three years ago, at a family summit, it was decided that it was time the next generation took over. And it was Sophie, the eldest of their four children, who stepped forward to take the reins. It was always somewhere in my mind that I would come home. Yeah, absolutely. And with Dad becoming ill and, and things like that, it just it came home to me more that I, I needed to be here. While her parents still live in part of the house, Sophie and her partner Josh have moved back from Australia to live nearby with their young son and to take over the running of Bantry. But the faltering tourist economy has meant that visitor numbers have dropped from 60,000 to just 28,000 a year over the last decade, while increasing maintenance bills have led them further and further into debt. There's the brickwork all around the house. Yep. Occasionally you would have little bits that come off, that would be a huge job there. Mm. I think both the lodges and on either side the of, of, the, of the building are in various states of decay. Mm -hmm. You could just go on and on. A large collection of treasures, including 15th century Russian icons, fine carpets and rare porcelain, were collected by the second Earl during his travels in the 19th century. And what happens through here? This is the Gobbler drawing room. Sadly, despite their pride in this important collection, mounting debts and overheads have forced the family to take drastic steps. We have had to sell furniture in the right. past um, to to keep the maintenance going. What has been sold? <laughs> this would break my parents' heart to no. say it, you know, um, dining room table had to go, mirrors, um, there are hooks on the wall with nothing on them. I mean, it's quite quite clear what's happening. Yes, and I suppose there is that irony that if you sell things, there's less of a reason for people, for to, people come, to, visit. to visit. Yeah, and, and the big ticket things are the things that would, would get the most money, but then what, what are people going to look at when they come in the door, you know, so... Yeah. Simon, hi there. Simon how Davis, how do you do? How do you do? Good to see you. Hello, Emily, Beth. how do you do? Amazing view you've got here. Yeah, yeah it's stunning. Fantastic. Where are we looking at? Is that... That's directly south, yeah. Right. Come on, Where's come inside. I can't wait to see inside. Simon's tour of the 32 room house starts with the grand hallway. That's magnificent, isn't it? Phenomenal. So, how long have you been here as a, as a family? We moved in in 2001, so 10 years, over just 10 years. over 10 years. And yeah. it works well as a family house. I can see here you have basketball hoops and yes. rocking horses and everything. <coughs> this is a family home. Yeah, no, definitely. And in the holidays, everything gets pulled out and wheeled out, and it really is a very entertaining hall. So, despite the fact it looks very grand, it's not a museum? No, no, no absolutely definitely not. not. No. The overheads must be significant. Yeah. It is costly. I mean, an, an example is. Um, the heating, yeah, and um, we, are, you know, it's ten pounds an hour in oil. Ten pounds an hour. Yeah, it, and um, so that gets turned knows, on how often? As little as possible, to be <laughs> honest. I mean, I, 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 um, I feel sick when I walk up outside and I see the, the smoke coming out the chimney, knowing that it's costing me ten pounds an hour. The main problems which we really got to deal with as, as soon as we can is we, you know, our chimney stacks are, are pretty much rotten. I mean, what yeah. sort of numbers are we talking if you need to redo the chimney well, stacks a on a house like this? You've got a chimney stack which has got, say, four pots, yeah? then you're probably looking at it in the region of about £10,000 a stack, and then we've got, what, seven? So £70,000 just yeah. for the chimney stacks? Just for the chimney stacks. And is the house open to the public at all? No, it's not. Um, it used to be. To get the house to bring in some revenue, James does occasional tours, charging £180 a time for a minimum of 15 guests. But successive generations of Cookson's have had to sell off most of the important artworks and furniture to help pay the ongoing renovation bills, leaving little of historical interest for paying visitors on a more regular basis. I imagine, James, when you first moved in, that must have been quite a daunting prospect, such a large house. We knew it was going to be a challenge, but I don't think we 
knew how big that challenge was actually going to be until we actually lived in it for a, uh, a certain period. But we did reckon that we would give it ten years um, before we would then made the next decision. And what did you hope to achieve during those ten years? We wanted to be able to continue living here, but afford to live here. Uh, which means that we wanted to make sure that our income and expenditure, you know, were covering each other. Hidden in the hills of West Somerset is Chapel Cleeve, a Grade II listed manor house dating back to the 1400s with a fascinating history. Throughout the centuries, this house has passed through many families, as well as serving as a refuge for pilgrims and, more recently, as a hotel. But it was near derelict when, in 1998, Jeannie Wilkins bought Chapel Cleeve at auction for £360,000 on behalf of her and her partner. It was a wreck, really. The roof had gone and we had started at the top and wore it down. They enlisted the help of a group of friends and country house enthusiasts affectionately called the A-Team, who, over the next three years, renovated the Edwardian West Wing and Grand Staircase. Every day was an adventure. We made such progress and you could actually see the house coming alive again. But her happiness wasn't to last. And after decades together, the couple split up. You never know when love comes and I guess you never know when love goes. Um, but he's been gone for six years now and um, struggling on, but it's not the same. Now, 63-year-old Jeannie lives on her own in this 15 bedroom house and survives on a frugal income from letting out one small wing. I never have the heating on. I sit in one room with a fire, go to bed with my clothes on when it's very, very cold. But while she devotes her time and every penny she has to the endless maintenance of the house and seven-acre estate, the building is crumbling. I can't sustain this because I have no liquid gold to continue to do things. And with a building like this, you're fighting fires all the time. As soon as you've done a bit there, it's time to do a bit there. It has a very chequered history. I would like to see it survive to try and preserve it for future generations. Jeannie begins by showing Simon the wing of the house she lovingly renovated with her partner and friends. Starting with the 100-foot Edwardian gallery, with its plasterwork by the celebrated architect George Bankart. This plasterwork just goes on and on and on, doesn't it? Absolutely beautiful. And the more you look up, the more you yeah. will see. Grapes and acorns, a grand staircase as well. 